Hello, everybody. My name is John Horrigan, and welcome to more so the picture than meets the eye. Behind the lens with legendary sports photographer Steve Babineau. Babs, 50 years as a sports photographer with the NHL, the World Hockey Association, the Boston Bruins, Major League Baseball, hockey cards, baseball cards, uh, Boston Celtics, Boston Red Sox, concerts, westerns, and more. Babs, how are you, buddy? Okay, buddy. How are you? Good, Good thanks. You. Good thanks. Hey, we had uh, done the first installment on the Big Bad Bruins, and we stopped here with Norman Levier, but I wanted to pick it up here uh, with these two guys. Uh, first of all, uh, they're, the goalie is a former Boston Bruin, I believe, right? What do we got here? Bernie Perron playing for the Flyers, and uh, Andre Savard, number 11, uh, playing for us. Uh, this would be me in the early days, uh, probably 75. Uh, shooting the Bruins with a different style uniform. The, the gold, the bars are gone on the shoulders. Oh, yeah. This probably would have been uh, uh, Andre's, you know, second second year. I think he was brought up the year before because I remember seeing some photos of him with the Bicentennial patch when I was going through the archive. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of cool that I ran into Andre. Andre's a scout with the Devils, and, uh, you know, I kind of mentioned this before. I think that I was in Florida, and I ran into him, and, told him that uh, my first hockey news cover was was him on the cover uh, of the hockey news back in uh, 74, 75, I think it was. And uh, and he like, whoa, you know, so we, we become friends and uh, I get his email address. And if I stumble on anything that, you know, I, in, that I still have in my possession, uh, you know, I uh, – make sure I get him a copy of it, you know, if I can. But, uh, you know, I've gone through the stuff that I've given to the NHL and, and pulled out a few things for him, and he's very appreciative of that. That's great. And he went on to play with the Buffalo Sabres. I think we traded him for Maxi, Peter McNabb, right? I think we did, yes. Wow. Yeah, I went on with Buffalo, and then I, you know, I think he actually was an assistant coach maybe with the Nordiques down okay. the road uh, at some point in time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's, he's scouting – the, the devils right now, I believe. Yeah. And then the other guy, first of all, uh, we're going to be doing a show in the near future on goalie masks, but how can he see out of that mask, Babs? I, I, that I don't mask, know. Yeah, that mask is all about protection right there. That's for sure. It's all about protection. You know oh, my I mean? word. And, yeah. Bernie uh, Perrant we're looking at. Bernie Perrant began his career with the Boston, Bruins, uh, Boston Bruins. He went to the World Hockey Association with the Philadelphia Blazers, then came back to the Flyers and won back-to-back -back Stanley Cup championships 1974-1975. Yeah, I mean, that, that's when the goalie masks were still white and uh, they hadn't been altered or doctored or creativity hadn't set in yet with goaltenders painting their masks. And, uh, you know, that – you can look at that mask right there and you're saying, okay, it's got small eyelids there to look out, but it's really about protection, you know, and uh, that's, that's how it probably all started, you know, in these goaltenders, you know, uh, just give me something that protects my head, you know? So uh, he was, he was a great goaltender. Great absolutely. Goaltender. Absolutely. And then we've shown this before and we're going to show them uh, in the minors, but the old American hockey league and is this Boston arena and, no, this is actually the Boston Garden. This would have been probably the first year when the Braves started to play. And this is actually a photo. I had season tickets behind the penalty box, which gave me an angle where the bench was to the right. The, the Braves bench was to the right. And I had this window with no obstruction to shoot that angle right there and also go a little bit further to the goal. And that's how I really started to just – it's the word hone your skills or practice with whatever camera equipment I had at that time. And, uh, but I was a season ticket holder uh, for two years with the Boston Braves. And that's how it really kind of, you know, started. It led to the WHA, you know, uh, in 72. But this would have been probably 71, 72. Uh, and then the WHA 72 in the garden shooting for the, uh, the hockey news up in uh, Montreal at the time. But, uh, you know, we talked about some of the players that are in this picture and there's a lot of players here that were, you know, Dave Forbes is there, Matt Ravlich, number 20, that's Terry O'Reilly wearing number five, Ron, right Boheme, front. Yeah. Ron Boheme is there, number 10, that's Paul Hurley, number two, uh, Ronnie Jones, number three, uh, over on the far boards, uh, all the way back, number nine is Dougie Roberts, number 12 is Tommy Williams, and number 18, I think it is, is Richie LeDuc. <laughs> he went to the WHA. Yeah, they went to the WHA. Dougie Roberts uh, 
you know, went up to the Bruins coming from Detroit. Tommy Williams went to the Whalers, uh, too. Uh, Forbesy hung around for a little bit. Hurley went to the Whalers. You know, Matt Ravlich might have played a couple of games with the Bruins, but then I think retired. But again, this is old garden, cushion seats. You can see those red cushion seats up there, which uh, was pretty comfortable. Uh, and look, the key here is look how low the glass is. So wow. you can see there's a tall gentleman over there behind Matt Ravlich, number 20. And that would have been about my height. That would have been about my height, too. So I was literally able to go to those early Bruins games in 71, 72, buy the obstructed view seats, but come down during warm-up. And because I was so tall, I could position the camera right over the top of the glass. And that really is how it started. You know, I just, then I would go up to the balcony, up to the gallery guard area behind the gallery guards. And that's where my seat was because you literally had to stand up at that top point in the, in the balcony, the highest point, the last four or five rows, you literally had to stand because everybody else below you was standing. So you had to stand on the seats to look down on the ice, the way the balcony was set. And, uh, but again, it was an obstructed view seat. It was the cheapest seat you could get, but it got me in. And I would come down during warm up to shoot the warm up and go home with pictures of Espo and Bobby and, and Cheesy and Chief, you know. So here's, uh, this, is a, this is a jump in time, still in the garden, sitting in the Bruins box, uh, the, sitting in the visiting team penalty box, Bruins side. And uh, this would have been strobe photography when I had installed the strobes in the ceiling. Uh, Terry, obviously the captain of the team. But again, you're in the game and the quality of the, 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 quality of the film now has gone from uh, you know, available light photography, buying 400 speed film and pushing it in a process that allowed you to stop the action and get the exposure to all of a sudden with these flashes in the ceiling giving me the capability of shooting Fuji 100 film indoors at 250th of a second. And the only down to that was that I had to wait every two and a half seconds for the power packs to recharge. But the quality, the quality of photography was just unbelievable. And it opened up a lot of different avenues uh, with the licensees of the National Hockey League that wanted card companies, poster companies, calendar companies that wanted that quality of photography so that they can make large glow ups, posters, catalogs, whatever. So, but again, I'm in the box in the game and it was unbelievable. Unbelievable to be that close. And if Terry was captain, that means that Cashman was no longer in the team. So that right. means what? 83, 84, perhaps. Yeah. yeah probably had uh, Peter McNabb, Mike Milbury, uh, you know, this uh, year, European guys had come, the Swedes, uh, Matt Stalin, Kelvin. Here's Ricky Smith, and I say getting his temperature checked by Bobby Clark. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Between the legs. Uh, this would have been from a face-off circle hole, so I'm around on the side now looking in on Jerry Cheevers in goal, who's playing goal there. Uh, and... Uh, you know, so it's a different angle. I'm not able to look down the ice to my left. I could really only get the blue line to my left in towards me. So it was more of a just focus on that zone. And uh, But this is available light photography. This is not strobe. This is available light. And this is the year he's wearing uh, – Bobby Clark's got a jersey there where number four is on the shoulder, and that's for uh, Barry Ashby, oh. a defenseman that died, I think, in the, in the summer, that summer. Before they came back and played, uh, I think it was a car. It might have been a car accident or something like that. Wasn't Ashby blinded in one eye from a puck that hit him in the eye? I think. I'm not really. I, I, you have you know yeah. more about that than me. Yeah. And then we have uh, Jerry Cheevers in the background with the uh, the iconic stitch mask. Yep. Yep. I mean, cheesy. This uh, cheesy was a great goaltender, and when you look at that gear that he wore in those days, it looks like it's just uh, <laughs> paper thin compared to what the goaltenders were today. And uh, but this is this is the grit and grind. This is the uh, this is the Flyers, the big bad bullies of the Flyers, you know, up against the big bad Bruins. You know, I mean it was like, you know, I remember working my regular job at the time and doing the doing the, the hockey games at night, going to games and it was like, you know, the topic of lunch 
that day of a game was who's going to go with Dave Schultz? Who's going to go with uh, this guy? Who's going to go with that guy? We were kind of like figuring, trying to figure it out at lunchtime. And I'm just saying, I'm going to the game to photograph the game. So, you know, wow. Mel Bridgman, you know. and Hound uh, Kelly. Seleski. Right? Moose. Yeah. Moose DuPont. Yeah, you know, they had they had some tough characters on that team, and, and that was a battle royale when we played the Flyers, for sure. This, uh, again, Old Garden. Uh, Otsi and Neely, teammates, you know, on, uh, you know, Otsi, the playmaker, getting the puck to Neely all the time. And this would have been a, uh, a yearbook cover for the Bruins where uh, I had an assistant by the name of Armin James that was helping me with lighting. And we set up one light uh, in the stands with a uh, with an umbrella on it uh, as a front light, and then I put a light a strobe light out on a tri on a, on a tripod out on the blue line that was high enough where it was just going to pop the Bruins logo, mm. and I had the two strobes synced together to the camera with cable, and uh, you know I just thought this was kind of like a Great pose. This would have been now when the penalty box was moved from the other side of the ice. The Bruins bench is behind the Bruins logo. They moved the penalty box to this side of the ice. Now both team benches were on the far side. And if you see in this window right here, this is where I thought it was going to be all over for me in shooting from the penalty box. Because the penalty box doors now were glassed in. But this particular door to the Bruins bench, you can see the size of this door, how big it is compared to, say, just, you know, a normal penalty box door would be probably where Otsi's leg is hanging down in the middle of the bench there, you know, over to that side. That's how big the door would be. But without doing total reconstruction on the boards on this side of the ice to reconstruct that, they left this pane on this door out but you see what i'm saying they left this out and this so the whole side here where oats and neely are is glassed in except for this door so i ended up sitting where oatsy's uh looking at the photograph his left leg okay not the one that's dangling but the one that's on the floor i ended up sitting with that door closed on a milk crate right there with no glass in front of me. Wow. So still able to shoot the game from, you know, uh, a different spot than being in a corner shooting out of a hole. And you have stones, you have stones, Babs, for, for sitting there. <laughs> and uh, it was unbelievable. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a great place to shoot from. And I was now, you know, I was, I was giving up the left side of the ice to, to Otsi's left. I was giving up that hole into the ice, but shooting – uh, vertical isolated on strobes from this position, it was it was a great great spot. Yeah, and these two players, Cam, what a tragedy with his knee. Yep. Twenty nine, he had to get out of the game. What a what a he was the consummate power forward. What a goal scorer too. There's another sniper just like Esposito. This guy knew how to find that. And the guy next to him, one of the greatest passers in the history of the Bruins, had some monster hundred point seasons for them. Could really move the puck, but. Uh, he I mean, played. I mean, you think he, of Otsi playing with Neely and Neely having the career that he had, and then you think of the other guy that Otsi played with in St. Louis, Brett Hull. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and the career that Brett Hull had. So Otsi, without a doubt, you know, was a main, you know, offensively skilled player to, that uh, made his forwards, you know, produce. And, uh, All right, and so now. Work with me. We got him from St. Louis in a trade. He, he, uh, he went from uh, – he started in Detroit. Yep. Started in Detroit. And I think we – did we get him from Detroit? I think we might have got him from Detroit first. No, he was at St. Louis first. He went to St. Louis. Okay. And then we got him We got him from St. Louis. Yeah. And then he, he ended up, I think, going to Anaheim after – he went a couple of places after us. Yep. But Anaheim, I think, was one of them. Yep. But, uh, you know, Otsi and I have that uh, – Otsi and I have that Neil Young connection. You know what I mean? That's, oh. a, story. That's a story down the road. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I'd like to hear that sometime, if we can put it on the air. Um, all right, this guy, a classic <laughs> uniform. This is his post-Bruins career. He's got number 16, which now the other guy uh, uh, in Boston, Rick Middleton's wearing. It's the Turk, Derek Sanderson. 
Yep, Turk uh, going to the Rangers, and I think when he first went there, he might have had nine, and then he ended up getting 16. But, uh, yeah, came back from the WHA and, uh, you know, was with us for a little bit and then uh, ended up being traded uh, to Pittsburgh and the Rangers, too. He went to Pittsburgh, too, I think, for a while, too. So Cup of coffee in Vancouver. Yeah. and uh, you know, Philadelphia so, Blazers and the WHA. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you know, a good player, gritty player, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people know his story uh, going to the WHA and uh, really kind of, you know, not producing the way that I think that they everybody thought he was going to play. But he was a great player and, you know, he came back to the NHL and played a few more years. Well, yeah, and, and he, yeah, he, he had good years. He's a, Bruin, he's a Bruins, you know, Bruins hero on those great teams when we won, you know. Absolutely. Great penalty killer, won the Calder yeah. Trophy as the league's rookie of the year, two-time Stanley Cup champion. Only, I think he played, what, eight games in Philadelphia in the World Hockey Association, signing the most lucrative contract in the history of any professional hockey player. But as you said, he came down, came back to the Bruins, had a quick cup of coffee here. They let him go to the Rangers, and he had a good year with Rangers. He had a good year with St. Louis, and like you said, Pittsburgh, Vancouver. But Derek Sanderson, I always loved him for the colorful character that he was, and he was always willing. Yep. yep. All right, this is a good one. Is this a 20 this goal is scorers, 11, 20 goal scorers? Yeah, this is the team on the grapes, uh, Don Cherry, that uh, you know set that unbelievable monumental uh, milestone, and all these players that scored – you know, 20 goals. And this was something that, uh, you know, I just threw together back in the day. Uh, these are all your cards, Babs, or your, they're these obviously. Would, these, would, these would have been all my photos out of my archive, you know, prior to me uh, turning the archive over to the NHL. And uh, but this would have been, they were doing a, uh, they, they were bringing the team back for a signing. They, you know, 40th anniversary. Yeah, they were bringing the team back for signing. So, uh the Bruins dug, dug these photos out that, uh, that I had given them and uh, put this together for, for the team. And uh, you know, they, would, they would use this as, you know, potentially they were going to use this. I don't even know if they did use it, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, it was something that was made up. And uh, it's just my copy of what was made. So, mm. And, and Babs um, – when we travel with the alumni, it's always a trivia question. And the guys on that played on that team know the answer. And also, Brick, Brick knows everything about hockey. But let's go over these guys. Top left-hand corner, Bill Rick of Massachusetts. We have Bobby Miller there. Bobby Miller, number 14. We have Terry O'Reilly, 24. We've got Schmatzi. Uh, I can't really see who's behind me. Nifty. Mine. It's Nifty. Rick, Ricky Middleton's behind me. Then on the left center, we've got Cash. Yep. Uh, and then we got, uh, is that Peter McNabb there? Yep, on the right center, yep. Yeah, and then uh, Brad Park, bottom corner, yep. playing down in Hartford, wearing 22. Donnie Markar, 21. We got Ratty against John Rattel against the Atlanta Flames there. <laughs> Greg Shepard down at Madison Square Garden playing in a game. And Stan Jonathan. Yeah, wow. What a great team. Unbelievable team, unbelievable team. What a great team. Great skill. You get uh, McNabb is a center. Raddy Mitchell is a center. Bobby Miller is a center. So your three centers are there. You know, you've got your wingers, you know, uh, and you got your your standout defenseman, playmaker, Brad Park. Now, this is just a contact sheet, but take me through I, uh, the first time. Uh... Yeah, I mean, this is just uh, this is just me before a game walking around and uh, going up to where the off ice officials would be uh, up in the balcony. And you know, this is a game sheet. Uh, I don't know if you can see who we're playing. I think we we're playing Montreal or Quebec in that. But the, uh, this is where Eddie Sanford would be sitting. Uh, the official scorer in charge of the off ice officials and stuff like that. And this would have been his position high up in the balcony looking down. And this is where the stats were all kind of like noted on this page, you know, shots on goal, you know, penalties, whatever. And uh, you know, it wasn't like today where they can phone to Toronto. If, if there's a question on something like that, this is right. You know, or time on ice. <laughs> the decision decisions were made from this location. You can see, you can see the age of the of the the 
the tabletop there and the plug and, uh, you know, a little screen in front of where, you know, nothing would fall off and fall down. But, you know, I was just walking around the garden. I love, I love, even I did that. I did that so many times just walking around the building. I do that in the garden. I do that at Fenway, you know, basketball games. You just, you know, if you get in there and you're in there before the doors open and all the fans are running around and you just get different angles of different things. And, and I just happened to be going by this area and, and I don't know if Eddie was scoring that game, but uh, it, the sheet was just there and nobody else was there. And I just took a photograph of it just, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, I know, I remember when I did my Bruins book, I was looking for like background pictures, just something different to put on a page or, you know, if there was going to be some comments made by Rob Simpson who wrote and we just needed a filler picture or something like that. So I had this, folder of just called backgrounds and you know this was one of the pictures that happened to be in the background section and the one on the right there is the two Courtnell brothers Jeff and Russ Courtnell uh, this would have been me going up to Jeff before the game and saying hey warm-ups let's get a picture of the two of you together you know what I mean this is you know to see brothers playing against one another so this would have been you know over by uh, I believe it's the Bruins bench. Uh, when I jumped out of the penalty box, you know, maybe right before it started or right after, after the warm up and, and got the two of them together, uh, which I thought, you know, they would want to have too as, as a copy or a print. So, you know, just again, thinking outside the, the box and trying to come up with something a little different. Uh, the next one down is uh, Andy Brickley playing for the New Jersey Devils. And uh, we got, I think it's Ryan Walter behind him with the C on his shirt there playing for the Devils. But that's Brick playing back in the day with the Devils. Uh, and obviously, we know who all who Andy Brickley is today. Right. The greatest color commentator on Bruins telecasts. Yep. And foremost hockey authority. He took the belt from me years ago. <laughs> and the other one right here to the right of that is Billy Smith during warm-up where I'm on the bench and uh, he obviously made eye contact with somebody up in the TV spot uh, announcer or something up in the balcony which is really only about six or seven rows off of the ice hanging there somebody must have it might and I'm thinking it might have been Chico Resch uh, back in the day when he was doing you know maybe the the Islanders games and stuff like that maybe yelling down to him uh, but his Billy with uh, with his helmet and this is not a mask this is a cage he's got a cage mask there uh, but it's it's a different look at Billy Smith smiling you know what I mean so uh, pretty cool to get that and four I, cups yeah for some reason I'm thinking that maybe tops might have actually used that photo as a uh, as a hockey card you know back in the day the next one bottom left there is uh, a young Joe Sackick playing in the garden and I am in the uh, Penalty box. Quebec Nordiques. Quebec Nordiques. And uh, I was pretty lucky because I got to see Joel play for Quebec when he wore number 89. And it was in the playoffs. And his first game was against the Boston Bruins in the playoffs. And uh, I have photos of Joe. I had shot photos of Joe playing for Quebec in that playoff series. And... Uh, and, you know, he goes on to become an unbelievable player, you know. Two cups. Two cups, Hall of Fame stats, and uh, becomes a coach, I think, what, what, uh, general manager, right? General manager? Yep. I don't know if he, he might have been an assistant coach somewhere along the line. But, you know, he saw me years down the road when he was uh, traveling with the team as a general manager. And, uh, you know, I told him about that game, wearing number 89, and he remembered me. He remembered me, and, and, and he said, I can't believe you're still shooting pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still shooting pictures. <laughs> yeah. Before we go to the final one in the right-hand corner, just um, to the Courtnall brothers question, I believe Jeff won a cup with Edmonton and Russ in 93 with the Habs. Is that true? Yeah, I think that's right. I think, I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. And then this guy, this guy couldn't score to save his life, lower right-hand corner. This uh, <laughs> Brett Hall, unbelievable, you know, knowing that I had photographed Bobby Hull in the WHA and Red Hull comes into the league and he had that unbelievable slap shot like his dad. 
and uh, speed like his dad. But again, he played with Otzi, you know, in St. Louis and uh, became a dominant, a dominant offensive threat uh, every time he stepped on the ice. And this is in the old garden. It's the Zamboni corner in the background there where that guy in the red shirt is standing there. Yep. Uh, but, uh, you know, we became friends down the road because uh, Otzi, when Otzi was with us and Holly was with St. Louis, uh, Otzi came up to me about five days before Christmas this one particular year and said, uh, Babs, you've been doing some stuff with Neil Young. And I go, yeah photography for Neil Young he said you know what is the you know I want to get Holly a Christmas present so I want to get one of Neil Young's guitars and I said no way is Neil Young going to give up a guitar <laughs> to not like you give up a hockey stick to a fan he's not going to give up a guitar I said uh, that, that ain't happening it ain't happening oh come on come on come on you know and I remember going home and thinking about it thinking about it and I, I had this relationship established with uh with neil meeting him in 88 and telling him who i was and you know not to jump change the subject here but neil's dad is a writer and he's in the hockey hall of fame as a sports writer covered the toronto maple leafs and so when he, when i told him who i was being the bruins photographer we sat and chatted and talked and and he looked at these concert photos that i had taken of him as a fan you know, bringing a camera in. You can't bring a camera into a concert today, technically, you know, other than a cell phone, but you can't bring a regular camera in. And uh, so, you know, you know, I thought about and thought about it. And, and uh, I went down to Cambridge, Cambridge, Porter Square, Cambridge. It was a guitar store there. And I went in and I just said 52 Martin. And I couldn't believe the guy went in the back room and he came out with a 52 Martin that was beat to hell, scraped up, whatever, but it still played. And Neil signed it, and it came back to me the day before Christmas. And Otzi gave me Holly's address, and we FedExed it to Otzi. Uh, yeah, Holly. And it arrived Christmas Day, I think, at quarter past 12, St. Louis time. And all I remember is my phone rang about five minutes later, <laughs> screaming, Babs! Unbelievable! I can't believe you got this signed for me. I said, where is it? He says, I got it hanging up over my bed. <laughs> So, so Ochi kept it. Oh yeah, Ochi kept. Uh, no, no. Oh no, Ochi didn't keep it. Holly, oh, he got it. Like, we got it to Holly, and Holly, Holly hung it up over his bed. He told me. And, oh wow, uh, well that's great. And well, that's uh, so that was a magic moment. And Neil signed it, you know, to my good friend Brett. And uh, mm -hmm. so every time Holly came to town after that, we would always talk about, you know, songs that Neil had released or songs from the past. And, and it was a great, it was, it was, again, it's a great story. It's, it's just a, it's a great moment for me in the relationship that I had with, you know, some players. Absolutely. And then uh, for Otzi though, to pull that off for, for Brett Hull. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just a uh, friendship, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, you know, so unbelievable, unbelievable. And I'm glad that I was able to help out, you know. So. And in future programs, we are going to look at some of your photographs of Neil Young in concert, which I can't wait for. But Babs, we're at that time again where we're at the conclusion of our show. I want to thank you for joining us and talking about your wonderful photographs and uh, quote, taking it from uh, Neil's song, what is it? Uh, a Morton picture that meets the eye. Hey, hey, my, my. Behind the Lens with Steve Babineau. Babs, thanks, buddy. No problem. All the best. Hey, appreciate it.